aftermath of the world's clumsy demise, I found myself wandering through a landscape of broken dreams and shattered skyscrapers. My only companions were the ghosts of the past, whispering through the hollow echoes of once vibrant cities. As I strolled along the remnants of what used to be a bustling street, I couldn't help but chuckle bitterly at the irony of a world that had crumbled faster than a cookie in a toddler's grip. I stumbled upon a dilapidated convenience store, its shelves long stripped bare by scavengers with more foresight than me. The only items left were a lonely can of expired beans and a faded magazine featuring a pre-apocalypse beauty queen smiling cheerfully. With a sigh, I grabbed the can, muttering to myself, at least my dinner won't judge me for eating it. As I sat in the ruins of what once was someone's home, the emptiness of the world around me mirrored the void within. The laughter that used to echo in the air had been replaced by the melancholy creaking of rusted swing sets, swaying in the breeze like the remnants of forgotten joy. I tried my hand at fishing in a contaminated river, the mutated fish mocking my futile attempts. Guess even the fish have evolved past my survival skills, I quipped to the indifferent waters. A soggy, half-disintegrated newspaper floated by, its headlines screaming about the apocalypse as if it were yesterday's weather forecast. Despite the desolation, moments of absurdity punctuated the bleakness. I encountered a group of feral cats donning tiny post-apocalyptic costumes, their hisses a cacophony of protest against the end of the world. I couldn't help but smile at their feline rebellion, as if they too were determined to claw their way through the apocalypse with a touch of style. In this somber, broken world, humor became my tattered armor, shielding me from the weight of despair. As the sun set on another day in this twisted reality, I curled up in my makeshift shelter, surrounded by the debris of civilization. With a weary but genuine smile, I whispered to the universe, Well played, apocalypse, well played. In the wake of humanity's missteps, I found myself meandering through the wreckage of what once was. The cities, once thriving, were now skeletons of steel and concrete, with vines reclaiming their territory. I chuckled bitterly at the irony of the world's demise, a cosmic punchline delivered with impeccable timing. It was as if the universe had played a grand joke, leaving us survivors to navigate the punchline. My days were spent traversing the desolate landscape, a lone wanderer in a tragic comedy where the curtain had fallen and the audience had long departed. The remnants of a civilization stood as silent witnesses to our collective failure, each crumbling building a memorial to the dreams we had built and abandoned. I had become a connoisseur of solitude, finding companionship in the echoes of my footsteps and the soft rustling of the wind through the skeletal remains of trees. Occasionally I'd encounter a fellow survivor our glances exchanging a silent acknowledgement of the shared absurdity of our existence. In these moments we'd share a weary smile, recognizing that laughter, however bitter, was the last rebellion against the void. One day, as I roamed the skeletal streets, I stumbled upon a forgotten relic, a dilapidated comedy club with a flickering neon sign that stubbornly spelled out, Last Laugh Lounge. The irony of a comedy club standing as a lone testament to a world devoid of laughter wasn't lost on me. With a creaking door and a hesitant step, I entered, the darkness within mirroring the shadows that had swallowed the world outside. The stage, adorned with faded velvet curtains, seemed like a forgotten altar to mirth. A spotlight, now more of a dim glow, illuminated the mic stand waiting patiently for a comedian who would never return. I couldn't resist the temptation to step onto the stage, my worn boots creating a hollow echo that resonated through the empty room. Clearing my throat, I began to speak to the invisible audience, my voice bouncing off the vacant chairs. 
So a post-apocalyptic survivor walks into a bar, but the bar is just a sad, dilapidated structure that used to serve overpriced cocktails. The bartender asks, why the long face? And the survivor replies, have you seen the world outside lately? Silence greeted my attempt at humor, but I persisted, channeling the absurdity of my surroundings into makeshift punchlines. I asked a mutant rat for directions the other day, and it just looked at me like I was the weird one. I mean, I might be the last person on Earth, but at least I'm not the only one with a sense of humor. My laughter echoed through the empty club, mingling with the dust particles dancing in the feeble light. It was a lonely performance, a one-person show in a world where the audience had vanished. Yet, in that moment, the act of laughter became a rebellion, a refusal to surrender to the solemnity that surrounded me. As I continued my journey through the remains of civilization, I stumbled upon a makeshift settlement, a motley crew of survivors who had found solace in each other's company. They had transformed an abandoned library into a communal space, the shelves now adorned with tattered books and scavenged board games. Among them was Molly, a former librarian turned makeshift therapist, offering wisdom wrapped in dark humor. Molly, the therapist, they call me, she said with a wink, handing me a cup of water purified through some ingenious contraption. In a world without shrinks, we make do with what we have. And what we have is a lot of unresolved issues and a limited supply of clean water. We shared stories under the flickering light of a salvaged lantern, our laughter punctuating the tales of our peculiar survival methods. Doc Giggles, a former pediatrician turned post-apocalyptic healer, recounted his attempts to cure a fellow survivor's broken leg with duct tape and recycled bubble wrap. Molly added, Nothing says get well soon like a leg wrapped in bubble wrap. It's the apocalypse version of a cast. In this makeshift community, laughter was our currency and humor our shared language. Chuckles, a former stand-up comedian who had lost his audience but not his wit, regaled us with tales of pre-apocalyptic comedy gigs and the absurdity of telling jokes to a world that had stopped laughing. One evening, as the makeshift campfire crackled, Chuckle stood up, his silhouette flickering against the ruins of a forgotten city. Ladies and gentlemen, survivors and mutants, gather round for the comedy hour. It's time to forget the world outside and embrace the comedy within. And so, under the starless sky, we became an audience of survivors, sharing laughter as if it were the last feast in a world where hunger had taken on a different form. Chuckles spun tales of mutant encounters and the perils of foraging for food in a land where everything was either radioactive or had teeth.